dear parents, brothers and sisters and little children. Today we celebrate the Feast of Manifestation or Epiphany. Some call it as the Feast of uh, uh, Three Kings or Magi. Once again, wish you all a happy new year and a happy Feast of Epiphany. We all know that we are the pilgrim church on this earth. We are journeying. We have been called to follow the star. And our star is our faith, our strong faith that we have been given in baptism through our beloved and loving parents. We must remember the coming of Jesus is not a one-time only thing in history. He comes each morning to call us individually and uniquely to continue our journey with him. Following where he, our star, leads us, his faith and our faith will help us, going to where he takes us every day, in and out of the highways and roads and hills and valleys of our day-to-day -day life, but ultimately leading all of us very safely to the home that is set apart for each one of us in heaven. We are reminded on this day as we celebrate this great solemnity of Epiphany within the context of the divine liturgy that the Son of God came for all. That is the manifestation. You will hear me repeating the word manifestation uh, throughout the homilies. God, Son of God came for all people, Jew and Gentile alike. His saving love is available to each one of us, to everyone, everywhere, in whatever state of life they may find themselves. There is no one outside of God's love and mercy, and that is what we celebrate today, the Feast of Epiphany manifestation. On this day, very, very day, my friends, we celebrate the Feast of Three Kings or Magi. May I bring to you one or two tra simple traditional practices in the world. There is a tradition in the church, the, epi the Epiphany, the, the statues of Magi, the three kings are placed in the uh, house or in the manger. Uh, some people place the statues of Magi, three kings, on Christmas day in the back of the church or in an obscure room in the houses of the faithful. And each day, from the Christmas onwards, okay, for one week it is. Each day they move the statues from their place until this day of celebration they will place it on the uh, manger, uh, reminding or symbolizing their journey to Bethlehem and as they give the Lord the gifts of gold, frankincense, and meal. In some cultures, they give gifts this day, this feast day, and not on Christmas. And we can see, uh, we can see it is also symbolizes the gift of the Magi to Jesus Christ. I, it is read that Italians uh, celebrate this way. They have a good witch. Uh, that flies around on a broomstick, uh, giving gifts to all good boys and girls. 
Or otherwise, if anyone likes to give a gift to anyone today, today is the last day. Hmm? So please uh, rush. Huh? This sounds strange to us. A, a, a witch, a good witch, is going around on a broomstick giving gift to the good boys and good girls. So the children have to be very careful. Good boys and good girls, then they will get the gifts. But it is strange for us, and I'm sure some of the Italian are here, but I suppose uh, for them, uh, a big fat man dressed in a red and white uh, giving gifts on Christmas would sound strange to them also, on the Sandas. Hmm? If we think that the Epiphany, the Epiphania, the manifestation, is only about the Magi and giving gifts, then we may miss the point. As I said uh, earlier, my dear friends, today we celebrate the revelation of God to all mankind. It is about entering into the visibility so that we might know him as God and his saving mission. This is the real content of the celebration. May I go in a little more uh, detail, my dear friends? Some of the informations I like to give you. Christmas offers us two of the finest reading, probably in the whole New Testament. The first one is the story of uh, Saint Luke about the birth of uh, Messiah. And we all know because we all come and surround the crib each year and we see what a wonderful sight it is. The second gospel is one we just read from the gospel of Matthew. It is the gospel about the epiphany, the three wise men coming to Bethlehem and bringing with them their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh and paying homage to Christ, child Jesus. It is hard to comprehend another point. It is very hard to comprehend, uh, but at the time in one of the traditions, uh, traditions in the church, uh, there were only uh, two days of uh, obligation, very special in the eyes of the people, the Christians, that day, years before. One, of course, was the Easter, the resurrection, and the other was not Christmas. Uh, here, we cannot understand why it is not Christmas. It is today. The other was a feast that we celebrate today, the feast of the Epiphany. Why? You may ask that question, why? Because you look at the crib, and you see the birth of Jesus, he is surrounded by the shepherds, uh, and his mother, uh, Saint Joseph, his foster father, and every character, even the angel, probably. The character in this scene is the welcoming. All these people are welcoming the Jewish Messiah. Jewish Messiah. Say, so, very, very, the Messiah came only for those people, Jews only, for Israel community only. But today, on this day of the feast, Epiphany, we know that all the Gentiles of the world understand that Jesus came not just for the people of Israel, but people of uh, everywhere. It has to be, it has to be the Messiah, not only for a small group of people who held the dream of receiving Messiah centuries and centuries, but it is, he has come for us all, and that is our church today, the universal church. Universal church. As we say, the word epiphania is the Greek word literally means removing of the curtain or the veil, and you can see when the when the veil is removed, what did the Magi see, the three kings see in the manger? They saw a child Jesus, a child is with Mary, the mother of, of God, and they fell 
in their knees, prostrated and worshipped. Here we go, my dear friends, every day, as I said in the introduction, Jesus is coming to us, calling us every day morning to journey with him. How can we journey with him until and unless we kneel down before him, worship him, and let us offer our gifts, the gift of our own lives before him as the treasures which the Magi offered him, offered him gold. Gold is a sign of symbol of kingship. The authority, the frankincense is the sign and the symbol of the presence of God himself seen in the perfumed a smoke of prayer rising up to heaven. That is what when we incense every time our altar and at the time of the funeral, the time of important solemnity, we have this incensing uh, during the liturgy and that shows us our prayers are going up to heaven. And the final gift, mirror, and some say mirror, a mirror was the perfumed oil which was to be used for his burial. And this, of course, a sign of his sacrifice for each one of us. My dear friends, as we follow the star, let us continue to uh, be strengthened and encouraged to proclaim the greatest message as the, uh, as the Magi proclaimed to the whole world that they have experienced Jesus. They have seen the mother. He has seen the first father. And they have experienced the powerful healing in them. That is why St. Matthew concluded today's message, we, uh, passage. We can see they, the Magi, went, took another way. Of course, it is because of the dream and told them not to go to Herod. Herod is waiting for your information to kill the child, so don't go there. So he, they took another way. Literally speaking, my dear friends, why did they to take another way? Why did they take another way? Literally means they saw Jesus and took another, another way. Means for each one of us, every time we kneel down before, before Jesus, every time we attend the Eucharist, every time we have this reflection on the scripture, we see Jesus literally and we will change the way, transform our life. That is, we take another way. Hmm? It doesn't mean that after the church you take another way. Please go to your home, okay? Transform, transform. That literally means to transform ourselves. One more question is for our reflection is, did you ever wonder why the wise men never returned? We don't hear anything about that, fellows. Further, why they did not return? Because they knew they came and worshipped him. They knew that the child was more than a child. And Mary had carried God himself to be born in that stable. And that God had come to stay in the midst of the people. So the wise men knew. And they carried their experience, their real happiness Wherever they went, again we will say, that is the spreading of our church all over the world. We call it as universal church. So I repeat, so I repeat the key point for us, as I said, we are the pilgrim church. We are going after, we have been called to follow star. Our star is the strongest faith that we have. And that faith has been given to each one of us through our beloved and loving parents in baptism. My dear friends, as we come to conclude the celebration of the Christmas octave and also Christmas season, it will continue a little more as we continue to pray for the spreading of the mission 
uh, in the whole world, we will continue to believe in the powerful intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary. We will continue to believe in the powerful presence, a silent intercession of uh, St. Joseph as the year 2021 is dedicated to the year of St. Joseph. And we will continue to believe strongly the healing power in the, the miracle working of uh, through the Holy Scripture of Jesus our Lord. We will continue and he will, he, his divine teaching will guide each one of us as a star that guided the Magi to Bethlehem. Let that teachings guide us to Jesus every day. May God bless all of you and have a very blessed, wonderful, happy day with your family members. We will continue to pray for the peace and the unity and the protection of our families. Okay? Thank you so much and God bless all of you. Amen. Hmm. I'm not improving at all. Huh? Yeah, I should transform. Hmm? I should. Yeah, let us all stand and profess the faith.